Good afternoon, everyone. I've got 15 minutes to tell you everything. Um, so it's going to be a very quick flick through um, what we understand from the UK perspective and the patients that we've had uh, through all the hospitals in relation to TTP. And it's very um, apt that I'm presenting after both Beverly and Lucy because you will see the overlap both in what they've said and what actually happens in these cases. TTP is quite unique. It's essentially the result of a deficiency of ADAMP13, which is a very important enzyme in our physiology. It's important in breaking down von Willebrand factor, and in breaking down von Willebrand factor, it makes platelets easier to stick to the multimers and resulting in primary hemostasis. So when you're missing the enzyme, you can't break down VWF, you form big strings with many platelets, and that's the result that we see in the blood tests of thrombocytopenia. Worse still, these lumps here break off and result in microvascular thrombi. And so you may see some symptoms in patients who present with TTP, but be assured these microvascular thrombi are in essentially all the organs. So from the UK TTP registry, where we collect all acute TTP episodes, this goes up to the end of 2015, it was quite an eye-opener. We originally thought that 5% of all cases of TTP were congenital, and about 5% were related to pregnancy or estrogen-based therapy. And in fact, from the UK registry, we were able to identify that the proportion of uh, pregnancy-associated TTP cases is about 10%. And the reason that this is higher is that over the last 10 years, we now know that congenital TTP presenting in pregnancy is often the first sign that someone has congenital TTP. So they've been fine for many years. And unexpectedly, acquired or immune-mediated TTP is less common, which again, is not expected. So having a look at our French colleagues um, cohorts, and they've done also some important work, they've identified that 24% of all their pregnancy associated TTP cases were in fact congenital cases. And they then did a very, um, very important piece of work actually looking at over or nearly 9,000 deliveries, and they looked at all women within that cohort who had a platelet count of less than 75,000 during pregnancy. In 50 of the women, they were able to get an ADAMP13 assessment. And in essence, 5% of all of these cases have and had confirmed congenital TTP. So that, again, is not what one would expect. So why are these women presenting during pregnancy? Well, the basic physiology that you all know about holds true. Given that it's a disorder of VWF or VWF breakdown, with pregnancy, the VWF levels increase. So if you have late onset diagnosed congenital TTP, you've obviously been able to maintain a milieu for many years with no problems, and then suddenly, you have nine months or six months of continuous and increasing VWF. And that's why these ladies pr present. They just do not have enough ADAMP13. That it is just an ongoing process. The difference between TTP and probably, although it's not my talk, HUS, where we thought that it was primarily diseases in the postpartum period and for other TMAs, TTP can present in the first trimester, so that's a very unique feature. Preeclampsia, help, more third trimester, end of second, other undefined TMAs that we need to understand. Even though it can present in the first trimester, the majority of cases of TTP occur in the third trimester and very early postpartum. It's just being aware, particularly of women that have had poor um, obstetric history in the past and or any thrombocytopenia during pregnancy. I think we've already uh, alluded to the fact of how do we not only treat but diagnose these ladies and it is 
generally very, very difficult. If it is suggestive of a diagnosis of TTP, it's far easier to start plasma exchange and stop than to miss the boat. Now, clearly, the overlap with preeclampsia and HELP is significant, and I'll show you some more data in a moment. But generally, delivery does improve the situation. And as a generic guidance, and obviously it will depend on reassessment daily, within about 48 hours, things usually turn for the better. But if they don't, or if the platelet count is below 50,000, I think it's certainly a rationale for at least to consider TTP. And given that ADAMP13 testing is so much easier to do in this era to just do the test. The initial treatment, as I said, is plasma exchange. Now, that's no mean undertaking, but it will depend on how well or not the ladies are. So from our cohort of pregnancy-associated TTP, we looked at the maternal symptoms and presentation, both in the congenital and the acquired group, the immune-mediated group. So the acquired are the red, congenitals are the blue. Now, the reason that I've highlighted this, again, in overlap with the previous speakers, in 40% of cases, it was completely indistinguishable from preeclampsia. Uh, pre and there was a threefold more likely chance of a woman having congenital TTP if they had underlying features that were very suggestive of preeclampsia. So this is the trimester presentation of all the cases that we've had within the UK. And as I said, immune and congenital TTP can present very early, but they primarily occur at the late second and in the third trimester. So we did an analysis of, of all the cases, which I'm going to break down a bit more in a moment, but I just wanted to highlight some important features. So there was more than twice the number of congenital cases, and if you look at their past obstetric history, the live birth rate for these women, uh, for fetal birth rate, was 39%. If they were diagnosed in the index case as having TTP, not necessarily congenital, the live birth rate increased to 75%, so you can improve the situation. But more importantly, the ladies that went on to have further pregnancies after the diagnosis of congenital TTP, the maternal and fetal um, live rate is 100% for both. That's not the same for acquired disease, and it can be more variable, and sometimes it requires more monitoring, whereas this group requires more treatment. So if we look at the fetal outcomes, and this was in um, the patients who had pregnancy before congen congenital TTP was diagnosed, you can see that the number that had intrauterine fetal deaths in the second trimester was really quite significant. But even in the index case, um, the intrauterine fetal death was uh, not irrelevant. And I've not even included here the uh, risk of IUGR. So what do we see on the placentas? So this is from one of our ladies who presented at 27 weeks with a diagnosis of query TTP and indeed had congenital disease um, and had to have the baby pretty quickly. Um, I think it's about 28, 29 weeks had to be delivered. And you can see that the placenta shows varying amounts of infarction and ischemia. But that's no different to what one would see with many of the other thrombophilia in the broadest sense um, that's sent to histopathologists. So looking at group one, those women who have a diagnosis of late onset congenital TTP, untreated problems are neurological, cardiac, hypertension, renal impairment. So this could fit into any of the other TMA groups we've discussed. And the fetal complications, again, as discussed um, in previous talks. So what do we do with these ladies? We give them regular plasma infusion from the point of diagnosis of pregnancy and subsequent pregnancies, usually every two weeks. That may be increased in the end of the second, third trimester. But essentially what we want to do is ensure that the platelet count and hemolytic parameters are maintained as much as possible within the normal range. Again, it looks very easy. It's not. 
they need to be delivered by 37 weeks. At those last few weeks, it, things really take off, both with compromise for the fetus and for the mother. And um, it's just, you know, there's viability at 37 weeks, and everyone's usually had enough by that point. And what difference does it make giving these ladies this treatment? So this is the, uh, one of the ladies who had presentation of TTP in pregnancy in associated with an uh, intuterine fetal death. And this was her when she had a subsequent pregnancy treated throughout pregnancy with plasma infusion. I'm no histopathologist, but there is a clear distinction and improvement, and essentially that's a normal um, finding. So a bit about the genetics for TTP, I'm not going to dwell on this, but unlike many other diseases, there's no specific hotspot. So it can occur anywhere throughout the ADAMPS13 uh, gene. But what we do know within the UK in particular, and in Caucasian patients, they usually have this one particular abnormality in the C-terminal domain. And is that relevant? Well, it probably is, and it probably is a reason why these ladies do not present until they have a constant trigger. Looking at those ladies who present with acquired TTP in pregnancy, again, the live birth rate and the intrauterine fetal death um, in the TTP presenting in pregnancy and following the diagnosis, i.e. In, in subsequent pregnancies, it's improved, but it's not completely removed. So there is still a risk and into the postpartum period. How we treat these ladies is very, very bespoke. It will depend on their baseline ADAMPS 13 going into pregnancy. It can still decrease in pregnancy to quite low levels and further treatment may be needed, particularly in the third trimester. We usually use low-dose aspirin and if they've had previous uh, thrombotic episodes, then we would consider thromboprophylaxis also. So this is one case that we had many years ago. In fact, I was an SPR when she first presented, and she was very, very sick. She lost her baby in the second trimester. She was on intensive care. She had bilateral PEs. She ended up with renal impairment, didn't need filtration, was then intubated. So it was quite a dramatic time for her. She then became pregnant again, had some treatment, and lost the baby in the second trimester. And it was at the time where we were beginning to do ADAMP13 testing. And throughout everything, her ADAMP13 was always zero and she always had a high antibody. But the only time TTP showed itself was during pregnancy. She was desperate for, obviously, a normal pregnancy and a normal outcome. And at that time, we decided to give her some rituximab, which is a monoclonal against the B cells. And she had six doses of that. Had to wait a period. That was fine. But you can see that the antibody decreased and there was an increase in her ADAMP13 activity. She became pregnant. And having lived through her first two awful pregnancies, we threw the book at her. She was exchanged throughout pregnancy. She had some steroids at the end. She was on aspirin, low molecular weight heparin. She had everything and had a very good outcome. And then within a very, very short period of the first uh, positive outcome, she got pregnant again. And obviously, by that time, I was completely laid back, and all she had was aspirin and a bit of low molecular weight heparin at the end, because we were able to test the ADAMP13 and be assured that the levels were satisfactory. They were tested very vigorously, just in case of a decrease. And she, she and her lovely two children remained very well. Now, the final group are those ladies who've had a previous episode of immune-mediated TTP and want to start a family. So you must remember that probably less than 15 years ago, uh, the international advice to these ladies were if you get pregnant, terminate, there's no possibility. That's not the um, way we would discuss with a lady now, um, but it can have a significant impact on them and there's a, a, a lot of counselling beforehand. As I've said, monitoring the ADAMP13, going into pregnancy with a normal ADAMP13 is a very good starting point, but they do need to be monitored throughout and into the postpartum period. We are restricted by what we can use. Low-dose aspirin, immunosuppression really is just azathioprine or steroids 
and we can use plasma exchange, but it's a big undertaking for anyone. Potentially we could use rituximab, but there's no data for that. So that's TTP in pregnancy in a nutshell, but things have really um, significantly improved over the last 10 years, particularly regarding our knowledge of the disorder and how to uh, improve the outcome for ladies, both with acquired and definitely for congenital TTP. And I have loads of people to thank from our own group, but from the whole of the UK and internationally. And thank you very much for your attention.